Welcome to episode 9 of Stonopolis, and off camera I've done absolutely loads, loads and loads and loads, loads and loads. First of all, every single strainer now has the everlasting input upgrade in them, so there's no more swapping about, messing around, trying to find a, a, a upgrade, so everyone's got one, plus I have one in my inventory. Second thing is that I've taken down the entire network of LV wiring, so there is currently nothing powered down there whatsoever. Absolutely nothing. We are going to put up our HV wiring network that I've made. So that's something else that I've made off camera. Uh, I had to use the second lava motron to get the thermal shards, to get the blaze rods, to make all these things. Ugh. Ages and um, believe me, ages and ages. Uh, what I did do was um, strain some. Um, I think is it another rack or is it? Nether wart, yeah. Nether. So I strained some nether wart, wart block under over in the eroding water uh, to get those warped fungus and crimson fungus. And the reason that we needed these was to create the two trees. So one goes that way, goes that way. Uh, okay, let's do the other way around. Yeah, so that's the magenta one. And then if we rotate them, that's the pink one. And then we've got some left over. Although I don't believe you can grow these in the uh, cloth, so no, you can't. So you'd have to strain more nether wart block. Um, what I have done is I, I took the nether wart out of the cloches that we've put up there, and we've got quite a few in there. I also put silver in here as well. So, yeah. Um, let's see, I made the squeezer, and the squeezer was needed to make the rods to make the HV accumulator, not the rods, but the material that is, re is required for the rods, which is this hot graphite. So you make that by squeezing eight coat dust and then you furnish the graphite dust. Not sure if we'll ever use the squeezer again, but it's there should we need to. The other thing that I did and I said I was going to do last episode was make a lot more power, and that's exactly what we've done. So we've gone from two thermoelectric uh, electric generators to two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two. So we'll be hooking all those up. What else did I do off camera? I don't think I did a great deal else besides that. Um, I have made a lot of things, like I said, there's the um, HV wiring, oh, let's just put those in there. And collect the quests that we need to collect. So I made the aluminium nuggets at last, um, and the silver nuggets, so those quests were completed. Uh, the aluminium you need for the HV wire coil has two steel wire and two aluminum wire. So that's that one. What else did we do? Oh yeah, the warped fungus. Oh, in fact, I need those saplings back, don't I? Oh, no, they've completed. So that's that chapter. Oh, apart from glowstone dust, which we just strain soul sand. Let's just do that. I'm not sure if we actually need any glowstone right now. It's got no mesh in it. That's got no mesh in it. Steal the mesh. Put the mesh in. Leave that running. Is that all the quests? Yep, that is indeed all the quests. So, to start with, in this episode, I'm going to wire up all this lot with HV. And um, I'm going to be quiet for this, so I'll probably either play a bit of music or I'll speed it up. But it'll probably be too much camera shaking to speed it up. 
So, uh, yeah, enjoy while I wire this all up. What I'm going to do here is have two outputs. Uh, let's go up to the top. And we're going to have one for this side. Which will just be closures. And that just leaves this automated engineer's workbench, I think. Now, with this, I uh, made one change, and that is the filter in here doesn't do one of each anymore, it does two. You could do more than that. Uh, it does, these nodes do transfer 16 items at a time. I wouldn't have it set at 16. But you could do, I don't know, 10 maybe if you wanted to. So that's not set. Um, so we just need to hook up power to this and then this should start working. Oh, um, need the blueprint. Now I did make a second engineer's blueprint. So we still have one in the table over there. And then that is selected. So now is it making? It is. Um, I seem to have misplaced the upgrade that um, just makes one stack. But I did some more testing and it doesn't actually set the redstone signal uh, going on one stack. It's about 40-ish. But I think that's because of the length of the redstone here. Um, so it turned the machine off before there was a stack in, basically. So I'm going to let this go. Now we've got a lot of redstone. We've got two over 2k each so this should should stop at 2000 items which is what this drawer contains although maybe a lot less maybe i don't know 13 1400 maybe the redstone will kick in and turn the machine off so we'll wait and see for that so just to recap this we have our output routing node here with the charcoal redstone dust and lapis lazuli uh, set at two times so that's the important bit because if you have it at all remember this will just fill up with one of them so it automatically puts two of each one in you have to select the 
item that you're going to make. Now, you can't make multiple items on the Automated Engineer's Workbench. Well, you could, but you'd have to come and manually change it over to another one and then put the other produce in. So, I mean, there's no automated way to say, like, like make um, the um, lapis stone alloys and the steel ingots, or iron ingots, they're not steel, uh, void iron. Uh, using the same machine, you'd have to make another machine, which is what we're going to do. So that basically sets this going, and they come out, and they get drilled, and then they get stamped, and then that goes into here. And as you can see, our power system is now coping with that setup. We've got all our garden cloches running. Uh, I put an extra one in here for grey. Um, this one has a void upgrade in it. Uh, don't think I did anything else. Nope. So remember the everlasting input upgrades? Yep, absolute godsend. Make sure that's working, that's fine. Still 2k charcoal in there. They will burn more as this uses up the charcoal. So what we're we going to do today? Well, since we've now got our lapis stone alloy automated, we can now make the iron ingots because that requires the lapis stone alloy, requires charcoal, and it requires, I believe, the void ingot, which we've already got automated here. Let me just double check. Yep, lapis stone alloy, void ingot, and any fuel. So we can put our second automated workbench up. Now we don't want this redstone signal to interfere with the second one, so I'm going to leave a gap there. And then we can put rotate the machine as we did before. So heavy machinery, automated workbench. And we want the redstone signal at that side. Oops. So we basically want it this way up. So two lights, a redstone, a heavy, and then stepped through. So let's see if we start it um, there. Two lights. No, two lights going this way. One redstone and one heavy. I think that's right. Yeah. And then two lights on top, the heavy on top of the heavy, and two slabs, and then the belt. Two lights on the two lights, the heavy on the heavy labs down here and then the four belts and then we hit this block here with the engineer's hammer voila no oh, right underneath that um relay as well that's useful so we can hook that up now And we need uh, some nodes. So, um, input routing node on the lapis, lapis stone alloy. And we just want to put the lapis stone alloy in there. We don't need quantities on this. So that puts lapis stone alloy into the network. It shouldn't go anywhere because we're not using it. So that should steadily count up, which it is. And then we need the output routing node. It's not going to go anywhere anyway, is it? Because it's not hooked up to the network. So let's just do that first. So we'll connect this one to this one. 
still shouldn't go anywhere. If it does, we've got a problem. And we'll connect this one. This one. Right, so the recipe for this is lapis stone alloy with charcoal and the void it's not void is it um yeah it is void void ingot now we want quantities on these otherwise it'll fill up with the same one so we want two on that one two on that one two on that one make sure it's got them in the filter which it has and we can put them in there and it should Ooh, it's not put the void ingot in. Why is that? Do we not have an output node on this? We don't. Right, okay. So this compacting drawer is not on the uh, routing network. So that's the reason why that didn't work. So input routing node down there. And then we set this filter to pull in the void ingots. And then just connect this drawer up. We'll connect it to this one. Now they should be going into this table now, but it still won't make anything yet. So there they are. They're all in there. Ingredients ready, but we need the blueprint. Crafting components. Correct. So we're going to put the drawer on the end. And as soon as you put this blueprint in, it should start crafting after we've selected the recipe, of course. There we are, void iron. And it stopped. Ooh, interesting. What? Two lapis stone alloy, two charcoal, two void ingots. Oh, well, there's just two void ingots. Why have we got no lapis stone alloy coming in? That's an input routing node, so that puts them back on the network. That's bizarre. Why has that not worked? Is it still working? Yeah, it's still working. So why is this not working? Is it because it did that? Two hours later. All right, let's just try this again. Um, right from the top. Not that it should make any difference whatsoever. Ah! Oh, that's interesting. That's interesting. So the redstone upgrade is interfering. Let me just put that back in and see whether it stops transferring the lapis stone alloy, which it has. Right, okay. So we figured out why. that change that so change that to slot one let's change that so it's slot i mean i would imagine that, that yeah it says slot zero so why that affects that i've i've, I've absolutely no idea 
Hmm. So if I change that back to slot, oops, slot zero, it stops transferring the lappy stone alloy. Yeah. Well, that again adds more complication than necessary on on these things. Now, because this functional storage has these redstone upgrades, one would imagine that a comparator doesn't work with these because if there would be no need for the redstone upgrade if it did. So let me just try and see whether it actually does. These are both full. Yeah, I imagine these aren't, aren't going to actually work. I got that the wrong way around. No, I think it was right before. There's no reason for a comparator to actually work on the functional storage drawers because they've got their own they've got their own redstone upgrades. And it's just a shame that those upgrades are affecting the uh, blood magic nodes. I didn't even think these were affected by redstone. I mean, there's no redstone controls in the in the GUI at all. But they obviously are. So let's have a quick read of the manual and a quick look up, see if there's any way at all to turn that off. Now the short answer is no there isn't. So we've currently no mechanism now for turning this off. I wonder if this when this is full and the items have got nowhere to go, whether it will actually just back up. If it backs up, then that's fine. If it continues to make them and they pop out here, then that's a problem. Now, if we make one of those restrictive upgrades again, we can test that out. Um, I can't find it. I absolutely no idea what happened to this upgrade that I made. Um, unless it's in a drawer somewhere and I'm not being one of those because they're... Now, these are something I've made that we're going to do in a minute. Well, I'm saying a minute. It depends how long it takes me to figure this out. So let's get the upgrade. And it's the, it's not called an upgrade, is it? Well, functional storage. It's called a downgrade. So let's grab that. What I'll do is I'll pull a stack out of here because we've already passed one stack and then put this upgrade in. So this now has a capacity of 64 items, i.e. one stack. And let's see what happens when it fills up. Uh, that's a problem. Oh, I'm really annoyed about that. Right, let's do it this way then. So break these. Chest in. Take all these out. Put them in here. Oops, not that. Bring that back. And then... All we need to do here is use a comparator. And as this chest fills up, it should turn the machine off, in theory. Right, so break this. Justin, 
put them back in. We can empty this into there. Now I'm keeping a stack on me. And then compare it to And that should keep this filled with lapis stone alloy ingots and hopefully turn the machine off when it gets full. Uh, now, what we need to do with these void iron ingots is strain these. Uh, but before that happens, I'm going to leave that running. I'm going to let this chest fill up and see at what point it turns the automated engineer's workbench off. And in the meanwhile, we can make the strainer. In fact, no, not going to make the strainer. I am going to buy it. Got no coins left? Oh, we have. Uh, it's not the catalogue, that is. Now we only need one, I believe, for this. Uh, we'll see how we go with one. Uh, because we're not dealing in nuggets with this, we don't need to set it up the same way as the uh, copper one, because the copper outputs void uh, copper nuggets. So we have to convert those into ingots, and then we strain the ingots. Now, what I wasn't going to do was use the same strainer as the one which is doing the copper, but looking at that, maybe we could. No, no, I'm not I'm not going to. I'm going to resist the temptation of using one strainer. Um what we can do though is utilize that. That's the input. Where's the output? The output's behind it, isn't it? Let's knock this away. There's the output. So this one here takes the void copper ingots out of that drawer and then strains them. So what we can do here, put our strainer a bit crowded here. I might move this. Might move it back a few. Uh, but I'll do that off camera. Uh, so we need a upgrade in there. Now we need a filter for that, which is going to be uh, these void iron ingots. We need an input, and we don't need an output. We just need an uh, an input routing node. Put them into the network. Uh, one on there. That's the output into there, and then we need an input back in which will go all the way over there to that drawer that we've already got set up. So we need an, um, we need two inputs and one output routing node. Right, and some, you, some of you may have noticed that I've got extra blocks in here, so I've made those ready for setting those up, but something I want to do first. And that is the, um, not that, the framed storage controller. So rather than have an, uh, an output node for every single one of the drawers on the network, what we can do is here, and I'll put it this way around, I've chose lime green so we can tell that it's something different. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up first. Now you have to make this linking tool. The linking tool recipe is pretty straightforward. We've got all that automated. And what you do is you shift and right click to select the storage controller and then you can click all the drawers that you want it to connect to. So we can collect it like that. And you see this box here? This is the range of that um, storage controller. So you can fill this square. Now you can see the outline here. You could in theory fill this entire area with the compacting, or, or, sorry, not just compacting, but any any of the functional storage 
Um, I don't think they connect to normal chests. No, they don't. So only the, the, the actual storage from the functional storage mod. Now you can extend the range of these and that's why I made this just to show you. I'm not going to use it in here because it's not actually going to make any difference. But if I put that in there, you can now see that, that range is much, much bigger. So we're actually one this side of the torch. See how big that is. And of course you can stack these upgrades in here as well. Um, so if I take that back out, you can see again. So that gold upgrade expanded it all the way out here. Or was it this one? It was this one, I think. Uh, so that's how you extend the range of your storage controllers. Fortunately, we can't get up to go all the way down there and connect to those. Um, it's not going to go that, that distance lengthways. I did experiment with these controller access points. Now, what you do with these is you could, in theory, have this chest a controller access point and the items would go into the controller access point and go into an assigned storage on that controller they'd link the controller and the access point together and then you'd have a draw for in this case void iron ingots and they would go straight into there so that's how you would link that up but we're not going to do that because we need to strain these void iron ingots so I thought that's what I'd just show you that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this routing node off here. And that's an output routing node. I'm going to put it on the storage controller. I'm going to put that back in. And then I need to link it back up. Now I don't need just need to link it from there to there. I also need to link that to this one down here. Now our copper should still go in here. So what we got 7046 copper ingots. And there we go, went up by one. Now we have got a spare one here. This this drawer is not locked. So if anything weird should come in on the network that I've not set up, it will go in there not get lost. So how are we doing here? Has this machine stopped yet? Nope. So we can see our redstone signal building up. I'm going to build up in strength. Now that's still currently power zero. I'm not quite sure what sets this off, as in what signal we need, whether it will, as soon as that becomes one, it will turn it off. So I'll let this run and see where we are before we set the strainer up. Well, we've kind of already set the strainer up. I'll tell you what we can do, though. We need the fluid, don't we? And the fluid for this is the purified water. We need a purified water in there and a trap door to go on it. Now, I've already made the nodes for this. So this will be an input routing node. And we will be inputting. Let's just uh, sort this out. Only want one. And we will be inputting iron ingots into this. So this is what we put back into the network from above. And in this side here, to go into that one, which is the opposite of that one, so it's the west side here, we want to be put in the void iron ingots in. So that's the west side void iron ingots, so that should put them in there. Now, nothing's going to go in yet because this one has no input 
We need an input routing node on there, but we're not going to connect this up yet. We will connect these up though, or, or that one. So this one here will be inputting void iron as well. We can put the filter in because it's not connected to the network yet. We need to figure out when this machine is going to turn off before we connect that up. And I need to make the purified water. So let's do that now. If I can remember how. Uh, where's our stone? We've got no stone. Uh, well, that's rubbish. And use the engineer's hammer to swing it around. And then lastly, just right click. That. There we go. That's all set up. Uh, doesn't have a, a mesh in there at the minute. Let's go and make a couple of meshes. Now there will be a backlog of this iron. Just make two. Oh, one thing we do need to do is on this, on this, we need to select the iron ingot to go in there as well. So we've got what, 319 in there. Right, so that is now all set up and waiting to go. So we've got our filter for void iron ingot in. That's the output routing node. And then the iron ingots once made will come into this input routing node. So yeah, uh, I'm just going to wait now. Because we need to know when this is going to turn off. If it's going to turn off, it better do. <laughs> we might need a repeater in there if it doesn't. Uh, but I've got a feeling it does because the more this fills up, the, the bigger the strength this will be. We just need to know at what point the automated workbench turns off, whether a power of one is good enough or whether we need more. And we have a halting presence, so the power of one is good enough to turn the automated engineer's workbench off, and that makes hmm, not off to stacks, does it? That's seven, seven and well, seven and three quarters, really. Um, so that one's going to be roughly the same. Now we could make this redstone longer. We could bring it out to here and go back in. And that would allow it to fill up more. So let's try that. Oh, I've just realised something. Um, 
this is not going to make iron ingots. It's going to make iron dust. So that is no good. I'm pretty sure when you strain this, it makes dust. Yeah, it does. So we need to put that into our furnace system here. So in this one here, we want... The iron dust. Yeah, where is it? There. And then this one here on the network, we need to input not iron ingots. So you right click to remove it. But we want the iron dust. So that then takes the void ingots in, converts it into iron dust. That puts them back into the routing network. Then they come out to this one. They go into the hoppers, then into the furnaces, get turned into ingots. So this one here needs iron ingots putting in. And then those iron ingots, that's an input routing node, will come out over on that storage controller and go into the relevant drawers. So this is looking better, just a bit ugly. And the fact that we've, we need more room now for the redstone. Now, I did have a quick look and I don't think we've got any alternative to using, you know, redstone. We've got no wire or anything like that. Um, or any redstone control type, you know, sort of things. Um, we've got the immersive engineering ones, but I don't think in this sense they'll be of any use. So... Yeah. Right. We'll uh, we'll wait again. In fact, there's no point waiting. It's just cheap. So I'm take a stack of these. Stack of charcoal. Stack that. Ooh. Okay. We need to up that process. Where did charcoal go there? I'll make a stack of those. That is really low. Is this still working okay? Right, we need we may may need to multiply this. That's going to run out very shortly. So I'll just throw an extra stack in there. That'll help it along. That's lit that one up. So yeah, that this looks a lot more healthier than uh, well, where we had it before, which was either one of these two stacks. Here. I think it was seven, wasn't it? Three, six, seven, and three quarters. So that adds a couple of more stacks on doing it that way. Now we could come out this way and loop back. Um, which will give the machines more room. So let me just demonstrate that here. So instead of there, we would come out here. Now, of course, that won't work. We need an extra block in. That should connect. And then that. That will actually give more room. So let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Against one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That, get, that gives two more redstone, which will probably add, um, looking at that, maybe another three stacks. So we'll see, because this is going to fill up once we run our avoid ingots here, which was probably already done. Yep, there we go. Run out. Now, <laughs> that, they're not going to go back in there. There is the locking tool. Yep.
because these drawers have to be primed, it'll stop here, you see. So what I need to do quickly is drop these ingots, uh, nuggets in and then lock it. That's fine. And then they will continue to go in then. Yeah. Uh, we'll lock that drawer as well, seeing as it's not locked for some reason. And I'm going to put that upgrade that we had, the, the gold upgrade in here. Simply because we're getting to a point where we're going to need to start multiplying a lot of these systems up. Right, did this stop yet? No. Uh, but it stopped producing because we've run out of the void ingots. So that is basically waiting for the void ingots. Doesn't matter that there's three in there. Oh, so that stopped as well, hasn't it? Is that using? Oh, no, that's not using void ingots. That is using these, and there is plenty left in them. Our power is doing fine. So that's all hunky dory. So next episode, we'll see where this stopped. We'll see where this stopped. And I shall beef up our void ingot automation, which may mean that we need more resource generators creating more void chunks. Don't think there's another way to create the void ingot other than the way that we're doing it right now. Yeah, it's the nuggets which is smelted from void chunks. There is no alternative method to doing that. So yeah, um, I'm more than likely, let's say they are at least full. They should all be full. Yeah, they are. So what I'll do is I will tack probably another four on this side and then have the output hoppers going into that output hopper. Um, and then we'll see whether it keep these keep up or not. But don't forget that draw there is feeding all those furnaces as well over there. So yeah, this is completely stopped now because we've run out of the void ingots. This will keep going. Be interesting to see how far up this goes, seeing as we've got the redstone going that way. And if it works out, you know, that it's like nearly full, then I shall change this one to suit. Although this one doesn't really matter that much because we're going to be taking these straight out and putting them into the strainer. Uh, but for backing up purposes, should something fail, like say the uh, mesh in that strainer, was not to get refilled and then we've got a system which will basically kill this machine from over producing so that is going to be the end of episode nine like i say off camera i will beef this up and we've got more void ingots being made and we shall see what the conclusion of that is in our next episode which will be episode 10 so I hope you enjoyed the episode. We finally got our power system sorted. And we've got two automated workbenches up on the only two items within the automated workbench that matter, and that's these two. And we've now got automated iron, albeit we'll just wait to see how far this chest is filled up. Um, when it's filled, I'll link this node up to the node network, and then we'll go straight to that strainer and get converted and in episode 10 we are going to now be working on our meshes automating meshes and we will be doing that with the assembler which we've already made the parts for so we needed to get the iron up and running first because that it is iron meshes that we're going to be automating for now and 
and then we've got to feed them all into the strainers, which shouldn't be that much of a problem, to be honest, because we've already got output routing nodes connected to all the strainers. All we need to do is on these filters, um, put the iron mesh in there. So yeah, that should be uh, pretty straightforward. He says, pinch of salt. We've already got the sticks being made over there. Uh, and the iron is going to be made and put into that compacting drawer over here. We're going into there eventually. And it's all hooked up. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode. We uh, we did have a problem, but we've managed to fix it ourselves by changing these to chests and using comparators, which is a shame because the other way was much tidier, but for some reason it affects the... Um, Blue Magic Resource Nodes. So, yeah, stay safe, be good, and I shall catch you in the next episode.